So what would a three-dimensional defect be? Um, and in fact, it's interesting, I think, to think about a th the di what's the difference between a three-dimensional defect and a zero-dimensional defect. Um, and so zero-dimensional defect would be something like, um, for example, a, um, an impurity atom. Okay, impurity atom. That is a single atom that's sitting there where it shouldn't be. I mean, where it's you know surrounded by other types of atoms, by solvent atoms. So there's a. It could be substitutional. It could be interstitial. What, what's different than when, when it's three dimensional? Well, zero dimensional is one point in the lattice, a single atom site. Three dimensional has got to have some kind of volume. So it's well above the scale of a single atom. It's a collection of atoms. It's, it's massively big compared to a single atom, really. So what kind of things would be three-dimensional within a crystal? Well, you could certainly have a, a pore, which is basically like a, a bubble, if you will. It's, a, it's, a, it's like filled with air, or it's, it's an empty space, I guess, would be not completely empty. It can have something in it, but it's, it's, it's essentially a, a little... Uh, an external surface uh, all wrapped around something inside the material. Empty space. Okay, a pore. Um, and you could also have some other type of material. Uh, uh, another material, so we call, sometimes call that a second phase. It's a different crystal structure, different properties. Um, and those particularly actually are very interesting in, well, both of these actually in, in material science. So when we're studying solids and materials, matter. Um, a pore, particularly in, in ceramics, okay, can be cause you know, big problems you know, with so the mechanical property of ceramics. And second phases are used in many, many, many metals uh, as a strengthening mechanism. Particularly, uh, there's a type of strengthening called precipitation hardening. Precipitation hardening, and it, it, we, we, it is very careful formation of these precipitates. And that's a second phase coming out of solution, but just in the solid state. In the solid state. Okay. So what we want to look at, though, without looking into all the specifics of how you precipitation harden a, a material, um, just look at how these second phase particles uh, present an obstacle to dislocation movement. And much like we did when we discussed uh, a dislocation, so I'm not even drawing the dislocation, I'm just trying to draw the lattice here. And then say we have a dislocation that's moving along through this, and we describe this for passing across a grain boundary. Well, what about if that now uh, passes, so this would be like a grain boundary, it passes in and has to change direction. But what about if we had, instead of it passing a grain boundary, it passed into some other kind of material, some other material. Maybe it's, um, you know, a compound. It could be uh, a ceramic, a hard phase, like a carbide, like iron carbide or something. It's a different phase, different uh, I haven't really described what a phase is, but it's different material. Let's leave it at that, actually. Different material, okay? Um, as an example, in, in steel, you pick up a piece of steel, and you're almost certain to have carbide phases, iron carbide phases, in amongst the um, iron um, lattice. And it's popular in marketing on tools and stuff. They'll say, oh, it's got certain carbides in it. Well, carbides are usually... Uh, very hard. And because they're hard, it means they're, they're hard to plastically deform. So it's difficult for the dislocation to cross that boundary and get into the second phase. So the, the second phase particles present, again, they present second phase particles, which is a type of volume defect or three-dimensional defect, these second phase particles um, present an obstacle to dislocation movement. 
And as soon as we hear that, we know that's going to make the metal stronger. Because dislocations have to move for plastic deformation to occur. So if we've got an obstacle to dislocation movement, that means this is a strengthening mechanism. Okay, so by introducing second phase particles into a crystal, and industrially most relevant is precipitation hardening, we can strengthen a metal. And uh, it's a really interesting process. Anyway, it pores, we'll cover that as a, in specifically in the context of ceramics, not so much as a strengthening mechanism, but second phase particles can be introduced, and they are introduced um, through different means to strengthen metal. Strengthening by second phase strengthening, it's called, or precipitation hardening is a specific form of second phase strengthening.